Okay, Control. We're gonna try the ho-ho-ho button again. Hello my fiery friends, the Inferno Man here with the latest in holiday deck technology. And for today's tech tech, first off I want to say happy holidays and Merry Christmas to all of you out there who are celebrating the season. So we're going to jump into the timeless format today to play a deck and we're going to actually go all out today. What do I mean by that? Well, we're going to go non-budget in this format because I actually want to put together a deck that has all of my favorite cards that are currently on Arena and then some. So with that, join me today as we try to put together a pseudo kind of on flavor deck for the season, <laughs> a deck that's going to be a lot of fun to do. It's super versatile and it's really awesome with what it's capable of doing. So with that, I welcome you to Santa's Workshop. But before we continue, if you do like any of the content that I do, please like, follow, and subscribe wherever you watch the content so you don't miss out on any of the gameplay, booster pack openings, deck decks, and so much more. Long time viewers of the channel know how we have to do it. We have to talk about the stats of the deck before we jump right into it. So Santa's Workshop is an is it artifact deck that's going to be running a perfect split between red and blue. We're of course going to be running an average mana curve about 2.2. Our creatures are going to be about 14 total. We have 8 instants, 21 artifacts, 8 enchantments, 3 planeswalkers, and 20 lands. So our holiday themed deck revolves around one thing. We're just trying to build up as many artifacts as we can and then take advantage of the value they provide. Okay, well, that's the video, everybody. Thanks again for watching. Okay, but seriously now, let's actually jump, of course, into the actual depth of what we're trying to do. So starting with our key card in the whole deck, what brings it all together is Retrofitter Foundry. You may have seen me play this card various times in other deck techs, but let's elaborate on it one more time. Retrofitter Foundry is a one mana artifact that simply reads where you can pay three to untap the Retrofitter Foundry, or you could pay two and tap it to create a colorless servo artifact creature token, or you could pay one and sacrifice a servo to create a one one colorless Thopter artifact creature token with flying, or you can sacrifice a Thopter to create a four four colorless construct artifact creature token. Whew, that was a lot to say, but you basically get the idea. This is, of course, the workshop itself, helping us build up as many of these little creatures taking advantage of our servos, taking advantage of our Thopters, taking advantage of that to create those constructs to then overwhelm your opponent and destroy them and get to our victory. But how do we build them up? Good question. Obviously, if we have a bunch of Thopters, that's probably the cheapest option. So we have 10 different ways of creating Thopters. Four copies of Yotia Declares War. You've seen me talk about this card before, so I won't elaborate too much on it. But ideally, if you play, of course, the first part of the saga, you create that Thopter. You can then tap it, of course, to then do some damage with your artifacts, or you can use it to create a 4-4 creature until end of turn. Otherwise, your other Thopters in the deck are going to be the Ornithopters themselves, free roll, and super super awesome to have in the deck, and then otherwise two copies of Hope of Gear Purge. This deck card actually does a little bit more than just simply be a sacrifice fodder for the Foundry. So of course this legendary artifact Thopter allows us to of course to do a little bit of damage and then sacrificing itself to then prevent our opponent from casting their non-creature spells. Really, really sweet and really helpful in a pinch in certain types of matchups out there. Ghostfire Blade here provides our creature with a two plus two pump and you have to equip for three unless it goes on a colorless creature such as our Ornithopter. So then it creates a much more cheaper way of providing a heavy flying threat against our opponent. And then of course, I know, I know some of you are gonna hate me for this, but I have to throw it in. If you of course played our other timeless deck earlier, you probably have copies of Raghavan now. So I figured why not throw him in? I mean, he's such a mischievous little monkey. I mean, think of him as, I don't know, I guess think of him as the Grinch maybe. I mean, he does kind of steal stuff and makes our opponent feel miserable when we do play him. So of course I had to throw him into the deck. I figured why not? Pseudo on flavor, so don't hate me for that. Otherwise, in, in terms of other magical Christmas items we are going to use, we're going to of course have in the two drop slot Ensel Artifact. If you haven't seen this, of course, we played it in another deck type earlier, but basically we'll turn any one of our artifacts into a 5-5 creature. Ideally, throw this onto our Dark Steel Citadel here, which is an artifact land that has indestructible, making it very hard for our opponent to deal with it in the mid to late game. Otherwise, if we're trying to close out the game very quickly, we have copies of Shrapnel Blast here, another pet card that I absolutely love, and this is actually a pretty sweet card. You saw me play this, of course, earlier in another deck tech as well. Well, of course, we can sacrifice an artifact to do five damage to any target. Really sweet to help us close out the game. As far as defending our deck in the three drop slot, you have Metallic Rebukes. It has the Improvise ability, which means that with our artifacts, we can tap them instead to make this basically a one mana counterspell against our opponent, assuming, of course, they don't pay the three. Otherwise, 
And then the only other creature we have in the deck is going to be Thought Monitor. I really wish that this was a Thopter itself, but I think it probably would have been too broken if it was. In any case, this 7 mana construct may look very expensive, but it has affinity for artifacts. For those that don't remember how affinity works, remember that with every artifact that we have on the battlefield, this card will cost 1 less to cast, making it ideally a 1 mana enter the battlefield draw 2 card. Really sweet, of course, in the mid game when we have a ton of artifacts out. Now, as far as support, this is, of course, where I'm going to stretch out a little bit of the flavor per se, but for all the good little girls and boys out there, we have the Royal Scions. Of course, if you remember the lore currently that's running around in Magic, I guess that means that Rowan and Will are technically both naughty and nice. But of course, you get the idea here. That's why I had to throw in at least one copy, but they do provide a really sweet, awesome option for our deck. The plus one allows us to loot by drawing a card and discarding a card. Another plus one allows us to pump any one of our creatures to give it first strike and trample until end of turn. We don't really care about the minus eight. We ideally just want to use this card for as much value as possible. And then finally, our last card in the deck is going to be one I'm going to call Santa Karn. Yes, I know what I just said right now. Don't hate me on that. But yes, Santa Karn here, i.e. Karn the Great Creator, is just like Santa Claus because he can, of course, dig through our sideboard just like Santa and find a nice sweet gift that we can give to ourselves. And hopefully we can utilize that to make our deck feel very merry and make our opponent feel miserable at the same time. So in order to pull this off, we're going to have an island, a mountain as our only basics. We'll have an Otawara Soaring City, so an entire set of Fiery Islet. Great if we absolutely need to use the draw card option in a pinch. Some Steam Bends, of course. Dark Steel Citadels that I mentioned earlier. An Inventor's Fair to help us, of course, dig out an artifact we may absolutely need. But ideally, you're going to want to use this, of course, for the incremental life gain to keep ourselves stable. A copy of Mirex here may look a little bit goofy, but these little mites basically can help us, of course, generate some more artifacts that we need to. And also gives us a plan B to the deck if we really need to find... An alternate way of getting a win and to finish it off of course some spider of industry since we are an artifact heavy deck now because we're of course we're taking advantage of karn the great creator as our santa claus in the deck we need to of course figure out what gifts can we give ourselves so we have a tormod's crypt to pull out if we have some graveyard hate a black staff of water deep can animate any one of our non-creature artifacts to turn it into a 4-4 a pithing needle hill to turn off any one of our opponent's cards that we don't want to deal with shadow spear here can turn off hexproof and indestructible stuff and also can give our one of our creatures a plus one plus one trample and lifelink for a little stabilization damn Spending Spear to turn off combo decks out there. Karn Silex can help reset the board and is a pseudo wrath against our opponent. And of course, Nettles is here. We sense have a ton of artifacts, so of course, this little germ creature token can, of course, pump itself up a ton and make it very hard for our opponent to deal with. And if you are interested, of course, in playing this in best of three, you also have Liquid Metal Coating here. This goes well with the card's ability. The plus one ability is specifically Steel Overseer can help slowly pump up our creatures and give them a little bit more longevity if we go long in the game. Stone Brain, of course, can pick off a select set of cards that we don't want to deal with. Mirror Box here, hilarious, of course, if you can pull this off with, say, a bunch of Rogavons and turning off the Legend Rule. You have Stasis Coffin here as more of our Panic Button option to give us protection from everything for a turn. The One Ring technically can do the same thing, but also it gives us a bit more card draw. A Forsaken Monument here can give our artifact creatures some plus two, plus two, give us some life gain, as long as, of course, we're casting colorless spells. And then finally, to round out that package against maybe, say, Control Decks out there, God Pharaoh Statue, if you can get up to that much mana. And of course, this can help us close out the game in a pinch. But otherwise, that's the whole game plan for you. So with that, as you can see, of course, the gameplay footage is I'm going to talk about some basic tips in the deck. Here's your biggest advantage, of course, as you now just saw the whole game plan. You are going to be super versatile when you play this deck. Santa's Workshop here really can help go into either Hyper Aggro if you have that early opening hand of Vragavon, an Ornithopter, or a Retrofitter Foundry. Remember that, again, with the way the Retrofitter Foundry works is if your opponent tries to target your Hope of Gearper or any of your Ornithopters that you have out there, you can also sacrifice them at instant speed to prevent that targeted removal from hitting you, and then just helps you then buff up your creature into a 4-4 construct. You can also do this as a combat trick to a degree if everything kind of lines up correctly. Take advantage of the fact that Raghavan, of course, will build all those treasures up for you if you can get him through, because those treasures not only can then be animated with Ensel Artifact or sacrifice a Shrapnel Blast, but also they do count towards the affinity for Thought Monitor and also Metallic Rebuke's Improvise abilities. Also, the, despite the fact that this deck may look like it goes 50 different directions, because of that versatility, you have a lot of ways of answering your opponent. So again, if you do need to outgrind them, you have that Royal Science to dig through your deck. You have Karn the Great Creator to take advantage of whatever's in your sideboard. Remember that also that for your aggro plans, Yotia Declares War will pump any one of your artifacts into a 4-4 creature. Your Enso artifact can be put on any artifact that you have, including, say, cards like Darkseal Citadel or even a Treasure Token. But of course, that's also the biggest weakness to this deck. Mobus of the biggest things that are going to hurt you, of course, are artifact hate and enchantment hate. So if your opponent has that in the main deck, you're not going to have a very Merry Christmas. But of course, keep in mind that 
with the way this deck runs, you should have just enough of anything to kind of adjust your game plan based upon what your opponent is doing. And the fact that our Karn is designed, of course, to then pull out anything out of the deck, you thankfully don't have to tweak that much in the sideboard, but if there's anything that needs to be adjusted based upon what's going on in the meta, by all means change it however you need to. To be perfectly honest, I tend to just lean a little bit more towards cards that I actually personally like as pet cards versus, again, what may be the most streamlined version of this deck. So if you want to make tweaks on it, by all means go ahead and do so. But otherwise, however you want to build this, whether you like the version that we have today or maybe you want to try out maybe a cheaper version, the simple option I'm going to say budget-wise is you can get rid of the sideboard, you can get rid of the Karns, and then maybe just go with more basics, of course, in the main deck if you want to cut down on the rares and mythics. But eventually, if you do want to build this, you're definitely going to have a lot of fun doing so. I enjoyed it, of course. But don't worry, for those of you out there who are still waiting for me to do more longer in-depth deck techs, our next timeless deck will be an in-depth longer one. So hang in there, everybody. I do apologize. But of course, being the holiday season, my plate is full right now. So this is why I try to throw out there a little bit of a small deck tech that's pseudo on flavor for the season. So thank you, of course, for those of you who are watching my stuff. And I really appreciate the support you give me. And with that all out of the way now, here are my final thoughts that I just want to give on the deck. Overall, yes, of course, I had a lot of fun with it. Of course, I have a bias because I love the is it colors of blue and red. And so I hope you do too, because if you are a fan of that, you're definitely going to enjoy this deck. It is a bit of a pile, but some some way somehow I managed to put together something that I not only enjoy with cards that I like but it actually does get quite a few wins in Untimeless so check that out of course yes it is a bit of expensive so I'm sorry if you can't afford doing this deck but don't worry everybody we will definitely have for our next deck tech in Timeless a budget deck so stick around for that one that one's going to come out later in the week I'm going to take a couple days off of course but there will be some shorts that are going to go up of course so stick around for those thank you again for all of you who have been supporting me throughout this year we had a lot of growth and I'm really happy with how this channel has been slowly growing into something big than I could have imagined. However, going back, of course, to the deck itself, if you're a fan of artifact style decks, if you're a fan of playing versatile styles versus anything your opponent tries to throw at you, definitely give this deck a try. Whether you want to play this for the holiday season or any season out of the year, you're going to have a lot of fun doing so. You'll get your wins in in Timeless, and I assure you, you will definitely not be disappointed. That's all I have for you today. Thanks again for watching, everyone. And just remember that no matter what you do play, in the game of life, always be sure to burn bright. Later!